Before we start today's show, I have a trivia question for the audience, and later I will reveal the answer. And I don't want any of you researching this, kind of cheating like you did in high school looking at those Scantron sheets, but here's the question. How many Super Bowls did the Niners win in the 1980s? Pick one. Zero, two, three, four, or five. Stay tuned for that answer, and let's dive into the latest 49ers news and rumors. Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Today's show presented to you by Manscaped. The most elite men's grooming products can be found for 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash 49ers. April is also Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, something that Manscaped takes seriously as well as us here at Chat Sports. Another reason why you got to get hooked up with Manscaped, I'll put that link in the comment section and the description of this video. Here's what we have on tap for today's show. The 49ers made a signing at the wide receiver position, bringing in Marcus Johnson, also a quality pass rusher of the Indianapolis Colts, visited San Francisco on Wednesday. Debo Samuel drama, baby. He unfollowed the 49ers on Instagram. What does this mean, and are there reasons to be concerned about him maybe not landing that contract with the Niners, and does it pave open an opportunity for him to get traded elsewhere? We start off with Marcus Johnson. According to Field Yates of ESPN, the 49ers have signed him and this is a journeyman wide receiver who we did our research and we have some background info on kind of been a guy who's been unable to stand and stick with NFL rosters for a little while 2016 undrafted out of Texas in 2017 he played 10 games with the Philadelphia Eagles but was a member of that Super Bowl 52 squad 2018 to 2020 he was with the Indianapolis Colts totaled 24 games 37 catches and 600 34 yards and last year only played seven games reeling in nine balls and 160 yards for the Tennessee Titans. This is really a depth signing on the peripheries of this 49ers roster. I'd be surprised if he makes the team, but he does add a vertical element and speed to the 49ers wide receiving core in addition to the aforementioned depth. His career numbers up to this point, 51 catches, 839 yards, average yards per catch at 16 and a half, and he has taken it to the crib three times throughout his career. Now this is somewhat no Notable because Marcus Johnson and Malik Turner, the Illini product, both interviewed and visited with the Niners on Wednesday. And with San Francisco signing Johnson and not Malik Turner, I think that means that the Niners are not going to be bringing in Turner. So I actually disagree with the move. I think Malik Turner throughout his short NFL career has been able to do some nice things. Last year, he flashed at moments with the Dallas Cowboys, 12 catches, 149 yards, three touchdowns touchdowns along of 61. I think he has a little bit more ability, but I think San Francisco is attracted to Johnson because of the vertical speed element to his game. So once again, I want you to be honest with me. Do you actually know who Marcus Johnson is? I do because when he was with the Eagles, he flashed in the preseason and I was like, you know what? This guy can really run up and down the field. Type Y for yes or type N for no. Once again, don't lie and get those votes in into the comment section down below. To Kamoko Ture visiting the San Francisco 49ers. Last year with the Indianapolis Colts, he was really good. Now, Arden Key went to the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2022. He can earn up to about $7 million. This past year with the Niners, he was able to really reclaim his status as a good pass rusher with six and a half sacks. And because of that, he was able to secure somewhat of the bag. Now, the Niners did bring in former Niner, Kerry Hyder from the Seattle Seahawks in free agency to help absorb the blow of losing Arden Key, but Komoko could really be the better upgrade from a player like Kerry Hyder and be a better Arden Key replacement. This past year with Indianapolis coming off career high in sacks with five and a half, five tackles for loss, so he was somewhat active in the backfield as a rotational pass rusher, eight quarterback hits, and one forced fumble. Also, when you take a look at the analytics, Toure generated a higher pass rush percentage than Arden Key and Samson Ebucom in 2021. So playing opposite of Nick Bosa, pass rushers are attracted to the fact of playing with San Francisco because Bosa's on that same line, as well as Eric Armstead. Chris Kosarek has done a great job as 
as the defensive line coach in developing defensive linemen. And, you know, uh, D'Amico Ryans has done a great job with this scheme, allowing defensive linemen to flourish, but also players like Arden Key, Sampson, have become able to break out last year with six and a half sacks, four and a half sacks, respectively. Ture could be able to do something similar and give you yet another depth piece in addition to Kerry Hyder along this defensive line. Coming up next on the show, we're going to dive into the much anticipated Debo Samuel drama. He unfollowed the 49ers on Instagram. What does this mean? We'll hop into that first. Here is the answer to that trivia question off the top of today's show. The answer, four Super Bowls in the 1980s. Here you go. Little factoid for you, 49ers won uh, four Super Bowls during the 1980s, including one in 1981, 84, 88, and 1989. This impressive string of championships earned the Niners the title, the team of the 80s. They would also go on to win Super Bowl uh, championship in 1994, making them the first team in NFL history to win five Super Bowls. Here's another trivia fact for you. If the Niners are able to claim their sixth Super Bowl, they will tie the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. Patriots for the most Super Bowl championships in the history of the NFL. As I talked about also earlier, today's show presented to you by the fine folks at Manscaped. We're about to talk about Debo Samuel, and Debo Samuel is the ultra premium package. The ultra premium package from Manscaped, it is truly elite like Debo running the football and catching passes from hopefully this upcoming year, Trey Lance. You get five products here, all for the grand total of $39.99. Just make sure you plug in that link at the bottom of your screen, manscaped.com slash 49ers. Enter the promo code 49ers for 20% off and free shipping. Body spray, shampoo and conditioner, body wash, deodorant, my favorite and Coop's favorite to my left, chapstick as well. $39.99 for all of these great products. I'll put that link in the comment section and the description of this video. So we pivot now to the latest around Debo Samuel. And obviously Debo Samuel wants a new contract from San Francisco going into the final year of his rookie contract. He's eligible and he is deserving of being paid like one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. So in case you missed it, Debo Samuel unfollowed the 49ers on Instagram. And because of that, everybody took the social media saying, uh-oh, is Debo unhappy with the Niners front office because he hasn't yet landed that contract extension? And in peak today's 2022 society, everybody thinks that Debo Samuel is now going to get traded. Now, the who followed and who unfollowed who deal on Instagram, on social media, really does exhaust me, but I do think that there's at least something to it. For instance, I work here at Chat Sports. I love my job. I love my coworkers. I love being able to interact with the Niner gang. And if I were to unfollow Chat Sports on Twitter and Instagram, there would be some type of level of frustration behind it, and I would be at least somewhat unhappy if it led to me unfollowing my employer on social media. Think about it from your shoes, right? If you unfollowed your employer, there's a reason behind why you hit that unfollow button because you're probably not happy with your general manager, the owner of your company, or maybe your boss or coworker. So there is something to unpack and there is something to be said for Debo Samuel being frustrated by the fact that the Niners haven't made him one of the top five highest paid wide receivers in the NFL. This also coming from Peter Schrager of NFL Network on the Pat McAfee Show, and he's reporting that Debo is unhappy with his current contract situation. Well, I think he's upset and the Niners just don't give money out. George Kittle had to wait. Some other guys had to wait as well. And Jimmy Garoppolo is still on the salary cap for $25 million. Just like Kyler Murray, they're not getting it when they want in terms of the player's perspective. They're getting that contract when the team wants it. And the team here in this instance is in control. Now you take a look at the highest paid wide receivers per year in the NFL. Tyreek Hill just recently set a record after signing that deal with the Miami Dolphins. Average annual value of $30 million. And I think Debo Samuel wants to be in this range b between Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, DJ Moore, and Keenan Allen and become one of the top five highest paid wide receivers in the NFL. Now a couple of weeks ago I put together this contract extension projection for Debo Samuel and it puts him in line with some of those wide receivers who we just showed you. Five years, $120 million in total money, average annual value of $24 million, so that would get him into the top four. Total guaranteed money, $65 million. This is also right on par with a player like Stephon Giggs, uh, Diggs, excuse me, 
while Stefan Diggs is a little bit less in terms of years, he does get a sizable sum in terms of average annual value. And Debo is worthy of getting paid and securing the bag. Last year in 2021, how many times did he bail this offense out when they needed a big splash play, whether it be through the air or on the ground? There's no question that Debo Samuel was the most valuable player of the Niners offense this past season. And the trajectory, the arrow for him and his career is certainly pointing up. You take a look at his receiving numbers, he was terrific. But this isn't all that he did for the 49ers as a team, as an offense, because he also contributed on special teams as well. And he impacted games to a high level through the air and on the ground. And I can make the argument he was the most valuable player in the NFL outside of quarterbacks. He can impact games as a pass catcher. He invented a damn position that is now called wideback. He was awesome in the ground game and his ability to pick up yards after the catch to be a vertical threat to line up outside inside makes him an incredibly valuable force on this Niners offense and when you want to move forward with Trey Lance as your starting quarterback who up to this point is inexperienced in his NFL career you think he wants to be able to hand the football off to Debo Samuel on a jet sweep or pitch it to him as a running back or give him a quick bubble screen or hit him across the middle like Garoppolo did so many times in between the hashes. For Trey Lance to continue to grow, for him to grow a level of continuity and camaraderie with his teammates, why not have a high-level player to his right, to his left, in the backfield in Debo Samuel, but you have to pay elite players, and I think it's only a matter of time before Debo gets paid by the Niners. Debo, we saw the numbers, man. You're a baller. You're a G. You're going to get that cash at some point. Just be patient. We're still early in the offseason. Last question for the homies. Will the 49ers pay Debo Samuel? Once again, let me know. Type P for pay, L for leave. Thanks so much for making today's show a part of your day. And don't forget to subscribe for four, uh, more 49ers news and rumors videos.